In this video I'm going to show you how I inlay the purfling and I'll be putting the finishing touches on the violin body. To make the channel for the purfling I use a purfling cutter or purfling marker which has a pair of blades which I can set for depth and distance from the edge. I'm going to go around twice, once for the inside cut and once for the outside cut and that just makes it easier to cut deep. Once I've got my two cuts, I clean out between them with a tiny chisel. The white that you see there is a dry soap that I used as a lubricant when I was making those deep cuts with the purfling cutter. Cutting this purfling channel can be done a lot quicker using a little router. And if you do it perfectly, you can't tell the difference. But if you do it, either one of them less than perfect, you start getting little slips. And to my eye, the slips that you get using the hand tools actually enhance the look of the purfling line and that's not the case with the router. Filling the channel with hot glue. As soon as that glue gets into the channel the wood swells so you have to take that into account when you're deciding how wide to make the channel. So here I'm pressing in the purfling and it looks like they've made the channel wide enough. and hammering it home to make sure there's no gaps underneath which can if you get it too loose you can get a buzz which is almost impossible to find later and once the perfect is dry I'm going to come in with this shallow gouge and clean up the surface and I'm blending the arch which comes down from the center and then sweeps back up again towards the edge so here's the perfect before cutting it back and after and you can see that it makes the lines a lot crisper. And finally scraping and blending the arch into the channel here and again this is something that you can't really see the undulations that you're trying to get rid of um, until the varnish is on when it reflects and you can see them as plain as day. Um, and I've found more and more I find that just using my fingertips is the best way to find out how, how surfaces align. The final surface finishing is done with a cabinet scraper. Um, violin makers hardly ever use sandpaper for this. Um, sandpaper tends to uh, dull the surface, so scraper finish leaves a much more reflective surface under the varnish. And the nice thing about the scraper is it shapes uh, in a much more controlled way than sandpaper does. Um, and once you got used to using them, they actually go quicker than um, going through a bunch of grades of sandpaper. The last job to do on the violin body before sticking the neck in is to round the edges, which are square at this point. So to do that, you start by running a sh even chamfer all the way around the edge on the inside and on the outside. And once you've got those chamfers running all the way around, uh, you come back and chamfer the edges off of the chamfers. I'm doing that here with a little mini plane. And on the back, the hardwood, you can use a, a another cabinet scraper, works very well. Doesn't work so well on the top. And finish that off with a bit of horsetail, which is the natural plant abrasive. So the plate edges and the neck are the only parts of the violin that actually get sanded. And once this is done, You've got a nice rolled edge there and the body is ready to have the neck chopped in.